Hey guys, this is Victor Baker, guitarist and luthier in New York City, and welcome back to the Guitar Shop Blog. This is episode 13. This episode is connected to episode 9, where I was doing the koa binding around the sound hole of one of the Archtop soundboards. This is, uh, this video goes over how I go about binding the headstock in koa. I'm going to just roll some photos and video I took while me and my assistant were going through the process of doing the binding work. Hopefully it's fun to check out all the various steps involved. I uh, usually start by putting the head plate on the machine bed and uh, cut out the logo. Uh, there's the VB going in, the pocket for the pearl, and uh, this is all laid out in the computer beforehand. I kind of plan out the binding on these headstocks the same way as I would an inlay project. Uh, traditionally, a, uh, the binding on the headstock is done by bending small pieces of wood around the curves of the headstock. But um, you know, with the, with the modern technologies that I have, I kind of uh, have adapted it into more of an inlay thing where I will just cut out pieces of koa from a piece of uh, material that are shaped to the headstock and uh, I'll bind it that way. Now the inner layers, the inner purfling layers are still done with uh, you know chisels and miters and that kind of thing. But this saves me having to bend a piece of brittle wood around the tight curves of the end of my headstock. And it's really clean work, very stable stuff. Um, you know, these are these these pictures you're seeing here are a few of the preliminary steps. The tuner holes are cut, and um, this is the profile of the headstock. There's that tight curve I always have trouble with if I'm bending regular style binding around there. But uh, this uh, profile is a little bit undersized, and that allows me to add material to the outside of that line. Um, that is made of, the, of the, you know, the various binding layers. This particular guitar has koa on the outside layer and then four layers of black, white, black, white. So here's a piece of koa and what I do is I lay it on the machine bed just like the head plate and I cut out these various shapes that correspond to the profile I just put on head plate and it should if all is planned well <laughs> it usually uh, fits right in place the machine cuts these cuts this stuff out to really incredible tolerances and uh, there you can see that's two guitars worth of koa I'm doing two at a time here after these pieces are cut out we take them off the table this is my assistant working on some of the project here as well um, pieces fit right around that uh, outer perimeter of the head plate. That's some uh, non-stick plastic that we're gluing the edges together with um, just so we don't glue it to the <laughs> glue it to the table but it allows us to keep it flat and there's the pair we're working on. One has a uh, crown inlay. After those outside pieces are glued on I index it back onto the machine table for a trim job the indexing is done with some discs that I glued to the table and machined that, that fit the inside of the tuner hole. And then the next step is to cut an engraving path around the border of the two materials. And this creates a channel where I can slip in the plastic purfling lines. Uh, and they're, they're precision size to the exact thickness of the material that's going to be inserted later. And then uh, this is the outside perimeter being cut. Um, those pieces of koa were glued down to a piece of white fiber beforehand. You can see that white fiber there. And that's going to create a cool side purfling line when it's glued to the headstock. And there's the uh, there's the channels, there's the koa, and with the channels ready for the purfling lines. The purfling is black-white, black-white alternating, 
and uh, they fit right into those channels and a little heat is applied to get it you know a clean bend around that corner I usually work from the top down with the uh, purfling lines where they intersect at the corners those lines have to be mitered or cut on an angle that matches so that the line appears continuous around the perimeter you can see some oversize there's a there's a miter where those lines intersect and uh, this is actually my assistant working on this he's got some pretty uh, good mitering skills to show off on video as well and uh, after they're in place it's uh, you know these these pieces are oversized and we'll scrape it flush to the face of the headstock and then uh, there you go that's what it looks like after it's all done and glued to the headstock on to some more machining steps here's the nut slot being cut into uh, the excess material if you notice I started out with some drilling steps a couple little quick drills to get through the material that's to uh, prevent blowout uh, because that cutter is moving pretty high speed the glue is pretty strong but uh, sometimes it'll it'll blow out there if you don't you know do a prep cut here's how I do my truss rod opening I don't use a truss rod cover on my guitars I prefer to have it open for the player to have easy access to instead of having to unscrew the cover and I like the way it looks when it's cut on an angle like this it's super clean very compact uh, leaves a lot of wood for strength on the headstock there's the side purfling I was mentioning earlier you can see that little white line there and the view from the front of uh, the other headstock that we were binding up and that's it thanks guys for watching this is a quick little one just a uh, glimpse into how I do some headstock binding hope you enjoyed it and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next episode